Welcome to the Book Club Review, the podcast about book clubs and the books that get you talking. On our latest book club episode, we discussed The Haunting of Hill House with Andy Russell of London's Horror Book Club. This gave us a good idea to exhume from the crypt that is our iTunes archive, our original interview with Andy that we did last year. The joys of being scared, the opportunity to examine our fears, therapy for our inner dark side, just why do people read horror? If, like Laura and me, you're a lifelong horror avoider, listen in to find out what you've been missing. You might be surprised. And if you're a horror fan, Andy has a recommendation for a book so scary it freaked even him out. But first, we began by talking about where the boundary between normal fiction and horror lies. There's so much horror in normal fiction, or in background culture rather, so fairy tales and folklore and myths and cautionary tales all have their monsters and their dark side to them. For me, horror is just a really intense version of that, something that we always tend to experience while we're growing up, maybe particularly when we're growing up. Tell me about the book club. What led you to start a horror book club? I was going to quite a few book clubs from Meetup, most of them genre book clubs. So shout out to the science fiction book club and the fantasy book club and the post-apocalyptic book club and the mostly harmless book club. And and they were great. As a kid, I had always liked to read Poe and Stephen King. And, you know, I'm a 90s child, so raised on Goosebumps books. After a few years of going to these genre book clubs, which I loved, I sort of had a hankering for stuff that I was reading as a teenager and looked for a horror book club and it just didn't exist. So I had to create one, and that was about three years ago now. And luckily, there's quite a few other people, particularly in London, but from sort of across the South East, really, who also love the genre. Now, I'm quite surprised by this, but maybe that's just because I'm not a horror reader. Mm. I never have been. It's nice to feel scared in a essentially a safe environment. Lots of horror readers and people coming into horror... Either that's what they love, or if they're not a fan of that feeling, then they might not come into the genre. The other side of horror that I think is more interesting is horror as a genre and sort of related fields, so weird fiction or or gothic fiction. They tend to be about what makes us afraid, and that's really interesting to me. Fear is something that individuals all have, societies all have, and horror is a genre that tries to unpick those fears as well as throwing in a few things that you know with the adrenaline rush it's a way to say why do we fear yes monsters and the dark and things that are life-threatening but more interestingly horror is full of why does sexuality freak us out the relationship between parents and children and why do we fear insanity the genre is full of those questions And that's what I think people really like to explore. The other thing that intrigues me about horror Mm. is that different things affect different people. So something that might actually upset one person or, you know, scare them. Absolutely. Another person might be kind of left quite... I'm just really curious to know when people kind of compare thoughts. Well, there are some fears that seem universal across all cultures. Humans really don't like certain things. They really don't like the dark. They really don't like something breathing on the back of their neck it doesn't matter where you're from so there's certain universal exactly fears. exactly and then there are particular really interesting fears that seem to crop up all the time particularly in the 60s why in the 60s and 70s were these really interesting books about children people were really freaked out by Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist and books like this what relationship do people have with their children and why something that should be so joyful did we decide was something that could freak us out mm. have you seen the babadook there's some jump scares and yes it's it's a horror movie in those ways but it's really about the fear of someone who's afraid that they might not love their child right. and that's terrifying yeah and very interesting it is it is so there are those types of fears that crop up there's a sort of zeitgeist of them i wonder if your tolerance kind Mm. of increases the more that you read I mean do you read things now that still scare you yes a book called The Troop with Parasites that was something I didn't think would frighten me before but yeah vampires and and ghosts don't tend to be in themselves scary it tends to be the context around why there might be so a vampire is normally interesting because it's normally Dracula in particular but every sort of spin-off since about 
what our understanding of sexuality is and the force of sexuality within a culture. And ghosts tend to be around family connections and fears and, and mental illness. Whereas the parasite monsters in the book called The Troop were just by themselves terrifying. I really <laughs> didn't enjoy those. I'm not sure if my tolerance has increased. I think my understanding of my own fears has increased. You learned something. Yeah, and then there's like, okay, I can start to look at that fear now and think, why is that something that I have? And how do you choose the books? Because it's a genre book club, it's a bit of a dictatorship, but I'm a very easily influenced dictator. Mm -hmm. The way I choose them is, how do I keep it diverse enough within a genre book club? Mm. That's how I do it, so... Mm. If we've done one type of thing too much, we won't do it for a while. Yeah. And then I tend to just pitch out some suggestions and people shout me down or say, yes, we'd love to read that. You recommended a book to me when I said that I'd never read horror. The Haunting of Hill House yes. by Shirley Jackson, which yes. you said was one of your favourites. First of all, I have to say, I absolutely loved it. I thought it Good. was wonderful. And the thing that delighted me about it was how well written it was. Oh, it's incredibly well written. It's Shirley fantastic. Jackson's amazing. Yeah. And, and there was such pleasure in that. I think perhaps a prejudice that non-horror readers might have about horror as a genre is mm. that it's a bit schlocky and it's mm. not particularly well written. Oh, Presumably yeah. you, would, you would disagree. Um, not always. There's the two sides of that horror coin, really. There's one which is some of the classics of the genre are classics of world literature. Dracula, Frankenstein, mm. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Picture of Dorian Gray, something like The Haunting of Hill House are outstanding works of literary fiction. But horror has this other side, and it's probably due to the popularity post Stephen King, largely, who I think is a great writer, and he's got some books that aren't great, and he's got some outstanding books that will stand the test of time. But then I think there were lots of imitators. It's just something that happens with genre fiction occasionally, is that people want to read the same things that they've read before, people are happy to publish those, and it means that some bad literature gets through. Mm. I think it just means being selective. And you know what? Some people are happy to read badly written books. Mm. So, you know, and sometimes, sometimes that's, there's a sometimes pleasure in that. Sometimes that doesn't matter, yeah. yeah there there's... are certain books where actually that's not doesn't really... Absolutely. And I'm largely on that I'd prefer my stuff to be well written. But there's a time and a place for a book that's just going to... You're just going to speed through it and it's fine. Yeah. Is there something that you've read that made for a really good book club book that you'd recommend? I definitely recommend what I recommended to you to mm. read, uh, The Haunting of Hill House. I it think has that so would many make layers. such a good book yeah. club book. It's perfect as well because it's not too long. It's 250 pages. It's got the right amount of plot with incredible writing with great characters. The horror is very layered in what it's trying to do. There's more than the house that's going on in that story. And another one which is a bit more challenging would be House of Leaves by Danieleski, which is an experimental work of fiction. He's reinventing what you do with a book. It forces you to turn it upside down and move it around and flip back and forward between pages a lot. Mm. It's got several narratives sort of contained within each other, type settings, and, and at the same time, it's incredibly scary. Like a slasher film or something like that. So do you think people should read more horror i have a sense that the horror section of the bookshop is yeah it's almost like fantasy has gained a lot of credibility yeah. recently with the popularity of game of thrones Absolutely. it's almost like it's sort of come out it's okay to like yeah. fantasy now i love fantasy i love science fiction but yeah they've had their they've had their coming out time horror is still the dark corner of the bookshop that you sort of you don't want to be seen sometimes as an introduction into what horror is all about jekyll and hyde is my number one we all have a darker side do you suppress it and just try and pretend it doesn't exist and then maybe see itself manifest in some horrible ways? Or do you look at it and you say, I need to understand this part of me, a part of culture, a part of all of us? I do pitch horror as a sort of weird form of therapy sometimes, as well as just being fun. Mm. Lots of the time it is just fun. Mm. Andy, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me about your horror book club. Thank you. Oh, and happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for this episode. To recap those recommendations, Andy mentioned The Troop by Nick Cutter, House of Leaves by Mark Danieleski, and The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Want to know more about The Horror Book Club? You can find them online at thehorrorbookclub.com or under at horrorbookclub on Twitter or find them on meetup.com. If you haven't heard it already, our latest book club show has lots more recommendations, plus a brilliant discussion with Andy of horror classic The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Find it on our iTunes feed or wherever you get your podcasts. And coming up on our next book club show, we'll be discussing Normal People by Sally Rooney. 
It may have wowed the critics and won a slew of awards, but did it pass muster with Laura's Book Club? Listen in to find out. If you want to hear what we're up to between episodes, follow us on Instagram at Book Club Review Podcast, on Twitter at Book Club RVW Pod, or why not drop us a line at thebookclubreview at gmail.com and tell us about your book club. But for now, thanks for listening and happy reading. <laughs>